station, Mrs. Houston, are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We are ready for the event. Houston Sports Authority, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Patty Smith with the Houston Sports Authority. How do you hear me? Hi, Patty. This is the International Space Station. We hear you loud and clear. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us um, on this today. It's, it's just amazing. We have thousands of people from all over the world that have participated in our 5K Anyway race and are here tonight to join us for this 5K celebration. So you guys are uh, amazing to do this. We are so excited to have you. Can you tell us you know, a little bit what it's like to just be up there for six months in space? Yeah, it's a it's amazing. Um, it's incredibly beautiful to be in space. One of the things that's so striking is the view of our planet. Um, and and you think you get used to this. And just yesterday, I went to go close the the shutters on some of our windows that face down towards Earth. Uh, and I went in intending to close them, and I stayed for about 60, 70 minutes doing almost a complete orbit of the planet because it was just so beautiful. There were thunderstorms over Africa and sunrise and sunset. Um, so it's, it, it just nev never gets old up here. Well, and I saw, look at, I can't do that with my mic. If I do that, it's going to drop. But you two, Shannon and Kate, up there doing some amazing, yeah, great, rub it in, doing some amazing things. Um, tell us a little bit what your daily routine is, other than looking out over the sunsets on Africa. Yeah, you know, um, there's really no routine day up here, I would say, other than getting up in the morning. Um, after we get up, we have check-ins with all the control centers around the world. There's about five different control centers. We check in with them, and then we start our day. Now, the day could be a day filled of maintenance. It could be a day filled with science, or it could be preparation for and conducting spacewalks. So it really just depends on what the priorities of the ground are at the time and how uh, everything is scheduled for us. So I'm going to ask you a two-part question. You guys can each answer it one way or the other. Tell us the, me the coolest part about being up there, and then tell us the worst part about being up there. Well, obviously, the coolest part about being in space is floating around. So you just uh, don't have to <laughs> sit, or you know, you can you can just hang out in space. That's the coolest part. Yeah, one of the more challenging things is that we are isolated, and I think folks on the planet really understand this. Um, you know, with COVID and with the pandemic, everybody's had to be isolated from their family and their friends. Um, and astronauts have known this for a long time. We know that feeling. Um, it doesn't make it any easier, uh, but if it does help folks on the planet, we know what it feels like. Uh, we do get a chance to keep in contact with our family and friends. We can do video calls once a week, um, and we can call them. We can do email so we have ways to stay in touch with our loved ones but it is a little bit hard being away from them for so long so shannon i want to start with you as a um, mission specialist and a flight engineer tell us kind of specifically what your role is my role is to do whatever the ground needs us to do. And seriously, we are trained in everything that could possibly come up up here. And so this flight, uh, the way the tasking has worked out, I've actually done a lot of maintenance on the station. We've had a lot of upgrades going on. And so I've been involved in just um, upgrading the station so it'll be ready for the next round of whatever is to come um, in the future. And Kate, I talked a little bit about in the intro about you being the first to sequence DNA in space. For those people that might not know exactly what that means, can you kind of give us an overview? What is that exactly? Yeah, so this is one of the scientific experiments up here. This started in 2016 on my last mission, and we've continued it up here. Um, so, so DNA is what's in every human cell, and it makes us who we are. Uh, we've never, we hadn't sequenced it in space before 2016. Uh, part of that was just a proof of principle to see if that kind of technology would work up here. We didn't know if it would. There's a lot of variables in microgravity. Um, but now that it's working, we can use this to, to determine things like what's going on with gene expression in humans as we're in this very strange environment of microgravity, or we can use it to do things like detect microbes inside the space station. So we just did a complete map, 800 samples uh, in the International Space Station. We're going to be looking at mapping all of the living non-human things mm -hmm. inside the International Space Station. DNA sequencing technology is one way that we do that. 
you know, being the first to do anything is, um, is monumental and a huge deal, but what does that mean to you to be the first? Well, I was kind of the hands on this experiment, um, but really it was the entire team. Uh, there's a whole group of people that worked years to get this technology ready to fly. Um, they have to do a lot of integration to figure out how it's going to work in this closed environment. Uh, and they were there with me. They were on video, and I was talking to them on audio when we sequenced DNA for the first time. And I think uh, everybody was just so incredibly excited to see the really, really hard work over all these years come to fruition and, and be an actual experiment that we conducted on the International Space Station. Well, as we mentioned, we're obviously here with thousands of people around the world celebrating transplantation, whether you're a donor, whether you're a recipient, and you guys up there with this DNA sequencing and potentially the ability to grow organs in space. Uh, can you kind of talk a little bit about that? I was reading through some of the notes um, on, on just why it can be done and specifically how the gravity affects the research and what you're doing, but can you kind of give us a sense of what exactly is being done, the progress is being made, and, and kind of what you foresee hopefully in the near future. Yeah, so we're, we're pretty early in this. Some of the really interesting things we've done on this flight have been started to grow uh, more complex tissues. So we're not quite at the organ level yet, uh, but we did, for example, grow cardiomyocytes, which are the kind of cells that are in your heart. And we added some additional cells, so fibroblasts and endothelial cells, all the other kinds of cells that make up your heart tissue, and grew these together. These weren't heart size. These were very small plugs of tissue, but we could look at them in three dimensions without the force of gravity, and we could actually see them beating. So, so Shannon was around when we were doing this microscopy, and we could see these cells contracting. And we're, we're doing things like DNA sequencing and gene expression on them as well. They've already returned to the planet. We do have some interesting technology up here that we're working on, something called bioprinting, which is where you can print different layers of cells and eventually, hopefully, get up to three-dimensional architecture. I think it's going to be a long time before we get to the organ level up here. Here. Um, but we are looking at ways that microgravity is different uh, for larger pieces of cells and larger structures in human tissues uh, as they as they start to form that structure if you don't have gravity uh, are there different ways for example that these cells can interact in the three-dimensional structure these are all the kinds of questions that we're asking up here really good fundamental research that we hope is going to help us learn about tissue structure and organs in space well, yeah, I mean, it kind of what comes to mind is the old Petri dish. You know, you don't have to have a dish, right? You can just set your stuff right there. And uh, Shannon, let me, exactly. Uh, let me ask you this. You've won numerous awards for some of the different things you've done in, in group achievements and things like that. And obviously, uh, this, this takes a team. Can you talk about how important the teamwork is up there in not just this, but really in everything you guys do? You know, I would say, I mean, that is just it. Teamwork is important in everything that we do and just about everything in life, I would say. Um, very few things happen on your own. Uh, when we're up here, as Kate was saying, with her uh, experiments that she's been uh, conducting up here for the team on the ground, it takes a whole team of people. You can imagine how many people that we have to uh, keep us healthy up here, to keep the station running. And it's not just the people at NASA. We've got team members all around the world because this is an international space station. And together, we can get it all done. And Kate and I just happen to be the members of the team that are up here conducting all the research for the people on the ground. And and in life, um, like I say, teamwork is key. You depend on your teamwork um, or your team members to accomplish great goals. And it's everybody working together is, is how big things happen. And I know you're a runner also, and I don't know how much you know about this event. I know we've talked a little bit about it, but we've got, again, people from all over the world doing this 5K any way they want to. We've had people, you know, running it, biking it, swimming it, bowling it, golfing it. Um, how would you do it, each of you, if you chose, and give us especially maybe a way you could possibly do it up there in space? 
Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, to do a 5K up here, you basically have two possibilities. We've got a treadmill we can run on, though we have to wear a harness to hold us down on the treadmill, otherwise we'd just float off of it. Um, and we've got an exercise bike. It's a little bit different from the bikes on the ground. Um, our feet do clip into pedals like uh, many bikes have on the ground, but we don't have a seat. So we're just clipped in and we can ride. And so those are the two possibilities. If we tried to swim, we wouldn't actually <laughs> go anywhere. So swimming's not so much an option, but biking or running is what we can do up here. Do you find it any different? I mean, if you're obviously you're a runner, so when you're running on earth versus running up there on a treadmill, I mean, is it, what, what's the biggest difference? Do you, are you going faster, slower, just the same thing? What, how does that work? Yeah, um, I can actually go a little faster up here because I can adjust how much uh, the harness is pulling me down. So if I have it pull me down a little bit less than I weigh on the ground, I can run a little bit faster. And that's fun because then I feel like I'm just such a gazelle up here. I'm just running <laughs> just beautifully fast. All right, Kate, if you're running up against Shannon, who's going to win in a 5K race on Earth? Well, I, uh, I haven't been training for marathons recently, but I did do them a while ago. I don't know. Uh, up here, it is, it's like Shannon said, it's very different. Uh, our form is a little bit different. And uh, Shannon actually tried running, walking backwards on the treadmill the other day. That was very impressive. That's a very good eccentric uh, workout. So I don't know that we could do a whole 5K backwards, but maybe we'll at least attempt it. So you guys have been up there for a while now, and um, by the time this, by the time we show this to our participants, you guys will be back. What do you, uh, what do you anticipate the first thing is that you're going to do when you get back? Ooh. <laughs> Kate says eat a salad. I, I think I'm with her on that. Eat a salad. Uh, eat some fresh food uh, that we don't have access to up here. I think also for me, take things a little bit slower. Our days up here are so incredibly busy. And so since it hopefully will still be springtime when we get home, I'm looking forward to sitting outside in the sunshine and just relaxing a little bit. Kate? Same for you. What, what's the first thing you're going to do when you get back? Yeah, Shannon's got some really good ideas. Uh, so I, you know, I think we're going to uh, enjoy being on the planet. It is a little tough when we get back. Things like uh, walking are hard. We've got to do a lot of rehabilitation. Um, so taking it slow is a good idea, and uh, you know, just enjoying the incredible experience that we've had up here. Getting a chance to talk about the mission with our family and friends, uh, show them photos until they say enough, enough. <laughs> and uh, and just really enjoy all the things that our planet has to offer. I think being out side in nature is definitely on my plan. All right, so this is a question that I always think of whenever I think about you guys up there, and as cool as this is, it, it's amazing, but I don't think you could pay me enough money to go up there because I'm claustrophobic. Does claustrophobia kick in at all for either one of you? I would say no. The station is actually a pretty big place. You can see the the size of space that we're in here, and this is just one tiny corner of the space station. So it's pretty big. We got lots of room, uh, no claustrophobia. All right. Well, we are so grateful to have you on here uh, again, all our participants. So uh, this was a real treat for them. I know it means a lot to them. They've worked very hard uh, to accomplish what they've accomplished. So thank you both. And um, I don't know, is there anything you'd like to shout out to all the people that are watching you on this uh, on this Zoom event today? Oh, we just want to give our best wishes to everyone. What you're doing is incredible. And we really salute your efforts in everything that you do. All right. Thank you both so much for joining us and uh, good luck. And we look forward to seeing you walking with nice, stern, steady legs back here on earth real soon. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants from Houston Sports Authority. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communication.